This species of seaweed, Capophycus alvarezi, is the most commonly cultivated seaweed in the world. I'm Scott Farnkrug, PhD. I'm a retired geneticist, recently unretired. Mostly it's cultivated in Asia, where seaweed is a part of the diet. It can be found in salads, seaweed in their sushi, in their sushi rolls. But mostly it's farmed for what it has inside it, which is a thickener. Carrageenan, an ingredient people may have seen in their ice cream. This farming, it doesn't require fertilizer, it doesn't require pesticides, and it really is just using the power of the sun and the beautiful ocean to create biomass, which has lots of applications in food and in health. In order for us to protect the biodiversity, we must first understand it. My name is Rodrigo Cano, and I'm a bioprocess engineer. The ocean always amuses me. The seaweed, pretty much traditional forest, but within the ocean. In Brazil, we have Capophycus alvarezes introduced for more than 30 years. Uh, the understanding if during these 30 years of time, if the strains have uh, mutated in somehow or how different locations can impact the physiology of the Capophycus alvarezes is still uh, not that much explored. And so that's why we're sequencing, to find the genetic diversity. And then we compare different samples to see how they perform and try to make that connection. Once we've made that connection, then we can select for the genetics as a surrogate for selecting for performance. The intention is to find those wild occurring or, or spontaneous mutations that have arisen that improve the quality of those products. Working on genomes, it's a big job. It's a big task to understand how the genome works. And the consortium really is the only way to do it. The consortium of Piper Genome has an important role towards the seaweed aquaculture around the world. Firstly, because the eukematoids, which is the object of our study, represents between 30 and 40 percent of the whole seaweed production in the world and that represents more than 50% of the worldwide aquaculture production. So the philanthropy of Illumina is going to have a big impact on our ability to characterize that genetics and connect it to traits. It's not the kind of industry that's at the size of, say, cattle or corn. These are small stakeholders, small producers, and really it takes this kind of philanthropy to make those opportunities happen.